Hey guys, good day. I wanted to shed some light on Julie Wedby's last prophetic word that she posted on uh, December 11th, 2017. Uh, most people probably have seen this and read this recently. And uh, I was struck with some of the references that were made in this word. I mean, this word makes it sound like we're like right at the doorstep of these events, these three days of darkness um, that are coming to uh, to all those who dwell upon the face of the earth. I think that's what's talked about in, um, in Revelation 3. But uh, you guys can read this. I'm not going to read it word for word, but there's a couple of areas that I just think we should make light of. Now, um, this is a Holy Spirit-inspired prophetic word, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It's a word of knowledge. She receives these words, and she writes them down. She's nothing more than a, than a scribe. Um, that's probably what she would say, but uh, she's really a prophet. She speaks for the Lord. So, look what she says. She says, Woe to those who call the holy profane, the profane holy, who see light as darkness and have exchanged truth for lies. Now, does that describe our current society right now? Everything is just backwards. Woe to those who call evil good and go so far so as to blatantly and openly practice their rebellion and idolatry without fear of whatsoever of the one true living God, Yahuwah. That would be God. The apostasy or falling away of so many has been subtle to some, but for others it's been open defiance and mockery of my truth. So if anybody was paying attention last year when they saw that uh, not only do we kill 3,000 babies a day, but it, when, it, when it became the... When it became understood that we were not only selling them, but we were sorry, selling their body parts along with that, I was just astounded that people just did not seem to care. And we see this same verbiage um, in Isaiah 5. If you look at the context of Isaiah 5, where this is mentioned, it says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. When you read on a little bit, it just says right there, it says, Therefore, as the tongue of fire devours the stubble, and the dry grass sinks down into a flame. Um, basically, it says that the anger of the Lord will be kindled against his people, and the corpses were as refuse in the midst of the streets. For all his anger has not turned away, yet his hand is still stretched out. He's still going to have mercy for those who will call upon his name. And then he will raise, the Lord will raise a signal for nations far away and will whistle for them from the ends of the earth. That whistling is used three times in the, in the Old Testament. And my thought is that the 144,000 are whistled for, this is, I would say this is the first, the first departure of that group. That's just my thoughts. Anyway, we learn about the apostasy, the falling away. That's talked about in 2 Thessalonians 2. I'll look at the King James we can get the exact wording. So it says that the coming of the Lord and our gathering to him will not occur until the falling away. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, the day of gathering the Lord, will not come except there come a falling away first and the man of sin revealed, the son of perdition. And then it makes a reference, I thought when I read this, it says, and they will not see the light until, this is they, the lukewarm, will not see the light until those who are my lights are removed. And I read that, I thought, the festival of lights, Hanukkah, which actually today is the first day of Hanukkah. Sorry, my computer's glitching on me here. Today is the first day of Hanukkah. It's right here. December 13th. Here's the days off to the left. So it's Kislev 25 to Tibet 2. So it goes from December 13th to December 20th. And of course we know that on December 21st is the first day of winter. And that will mark when Jesus says, pray that your flight may not be in winter. So maybe the flight's <laughs> out of here all for the first faithful first fruits groups occur before that. We'll see. Okay. Then there's, uh, she, uh, he exhorts us to prepare our families by warning them that there is no more time. I know we probably all talk to our families. They're, they're tired of hearing from us. They're, you know, you probably stopped at this point. 
Turn off all your media and your recreational entertainment and carefully listen for my instructions. So we're going to hear from the Lord. So Jesus says, my sheep, they hear my voice. So if you're, if you're part of his flock, you will hear his voice. Pray over your families, your loved ones, your shelters, your vehicles, your resources, your finances, and all technology that you use, including your banking transactions and all other types of business dealing with, dealing with them. Things that are done in your lives. Pray over your electricity, your water sources, your foundational structures. Your this sounds like you know something's gonna really gonna happen bad, but the Lord is gonna send. He ask for my wall of fire and angelic protection. High into the heavens above you, deep into the earth beneath you, and far into the outer perimeters of your dwelling places, both at home and in your places of travel. So there is going to be calamity that the Lord is gonna allow us to be protected for supernaturally by our our uh, angels that watch over us. My people, I am coming. I am coming quickly. There will be a day very soon where you will suddenly realize it's too late to choose and my wrath will alarmingly become your instant reality. That's for those who are left behind. This word actually says prepare for physical darkness. There have been many prophetic words that have said we are in darkness, but obviously we still have the sun coming out. That I think it's referring to spiritual darkness. Look what it says here. I am about to shake this entire earth like never before. If you study the prophet Haggai, he speaks of this. Haggai chapter 2. It starts off in the very beginning that there is a reference to uh, the 21st day of the seventh month, which is the seventh day or the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. And the Lord says, I am about to shake the heavens and the earth. He's about to do it. I'm sorry. He's going to. He will in the future. I misquoted. He will in the future. Let me see this one. So, yeah, right here. Verse 7. I will shake, in future tense, all the nations, the one whom all the nations desire will come. If you jump down here, you see that a little while later he says, I am about to shake. So we're getting closer. So, But this is on the 24th day. So the word of the, the Lord spoke to his prophet, prophet, prophet Haggai. This, uh, for a second time on the 24th day of the ninth month. He says, I am going to shake the heavens and the earth. So it's, it's not future tense, it's like present tense. I will overthrow kingdoms and destroy the powers of the nations. I will overthrow the chariots and their riders. So we saw this initial warning back in the September time frame, but now we're hearing something in the December time frame. If this is the year that the Lord chooses to fulfill this, it's really now, because when you look at the the calendar, the 24th day of the ninth month is basically now. So he's telling us, I'm about to, getting ready to. Today's the 20th, uh, 13th of December. Okay, so prepare for physical darkness. I'm going to bring physical darkness. I've never seen a prophetic word that's actually said this so plainly. And with the, the tone that it's, look, I am going to bring about physical darkness once again on the earth in order to shake the, the hard-hearted as well as the lukewarm, the apathetic and the com compromising ones who still remain stubborn. These are for the folks who just won't listen to these warnings. The experience during this time of darkness will be very specific to each soul's journey and intimacy of intimacy with me. A great peaceful and joy will accompany those who already have a covenant with me, those who are already his. Peace and joy will come. Where do we talk about peace and joy? Dare I say over the Christmas holiday? Okay. I tell you a great mystery. This is for those who have co-labored and those who have gone down the narrow path. The bride of Christ, those who are already his. He's going to say, I tell you a great mystery. It's about to be revealed to you. For you will see, sorry about that, let me just go ahead and get rid of that right there. For you will see nearing the end of the third day of darkness. I'm sorry, for you see you are nearing the end of the third day of darkness. So this group has already been in darkness. Third day. Then it makes a reference down here. It says, at the end of darkness I speak of having experienced both in the natural and in the spiritual. So we... The 144,000, the Bride of Christ, have experienced darkness in the natural, which I would say maybe is August 21st, 
as well as spiritual darkness for the last three days the Lord is speaking us speaking to us so I thought to myself if you go from August 21st out to sometime in December I think December 19th that's 120 days and you learn from scripture could that be three sets of 40 days we know in Genesis chapter 6 when Moses is speak I'm sorry when God is speaking to Noah he says to Noah he says my spirit shall not abide in man forever for he is flesh his days will be 120 he throws a year now look this is confusing to read but the Lord refers to his days will be 120 years some people say 120 jubilees this is one of these things that just it could really be fulfilled multiple different ways but when you look at just the part about the days his days would be 120 and when you go from August 21st plus 120 days I think it lands on December December 19th or December 21st but still hey look I don't know the day of the hour I'm just making the observation there's also a 120, 120 day period from where Moses went up onto the mountain and then on Tishri 10 120 days later he went up on the mountain with three 40 day segments he came down on Yom Kippur which is the holiest day of the year it's like judgment day to the Jews so there seems to be a pattern there with this three spiritual days of darkness and they're coming to an end so for those who are with the Lord we look what it says here it says your breakthrough is very near and in this I refer to your transition from the natural to the spiritual realm for you know this is not your home so basically for us who are watching for us the bride of Christ or the 144,000 there is going to be a transition from the natural to the spiritual realm I really see this as being Revelation 4 1 where this select group this chosen group these chosen vessels who walk with the Lord through the narrow way these guys are going to be transitioned from the natural realm into the spirit realm and that's exactly what it says in Revelation 4 John saw an open door that nobody could shut he heard a trumpet blast and he was immediately he was in spirit in the throne room but for those who are still coming to me who have not reached that point in intimacy on your journey know this you will experience a bit more testing as your refinement continues for there is great work to be done in a short amount of time to these guys he says persevere so I just wanted to point out that this word really sounds like things are happening real soon like I said we don't know the day of the hour I don't know the day of the hour but it would appear that there is something going on through these eight days of Hanukkah it just seems like it now if you recall from scripture we know that Lazarus who I say represents the 144,000 or the warrior bride he died on the fourth day of the month and that was the month of Nisan but it's referred to as the fourth day which would be right here and then he was raised on the eighth day which would be the 20th of December so I'm just looking at patterns and making speculations but once again I do not know the day of the hour so don't please don't accuse me of that I realize that how many times are people going to put comments up where they post a scripture from Jesus it's just a speculation guys with that, guys, have a good day, and God bless.